Hello, pal pals. Welcome. Welcome to Orchids for Dummies. Yes, baby. Welcome back. Just when you thought he was done uploading, honey, he hit you with another video, darling. Yes, honey, I did, honey, I did. In today's video, we are going to be talking about white mold, snow mold, that white stuff, that white fuzzy stuff on top of your roots. That is what this video is all about, darling. I am going to get into the nitty gritty. Now, I have already done a video on black mold. If you haven't seen that video, I will leave an info card above. Also, I will leave a link in the description box below. Stay tuned, foul pals. Stay tuned. Now, foul pals, before we begin, I would like to give out a tributary just for one moment, meaning that I am a new brewer. Almost as soon as I started growing, I picked up a camera and started documenting what I'm going through. As I said in my very first video, what makes me and this channel so unique is I am one of you. I am one of you with a rich husband, honey, who can afford to buy any and everything that is going to give you an exceptional, an exceptional 4K video on YouTube, darling. Yes, that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. So, I just want to say that I am one of the people like you that have sat there and watched almost every Miss Orchid Girl video, with that being almost 3,000 videos. I've seen them all. And at the end of the day, my orchids are not doing any better than what they would have been doing if I had do been doing what I'm doing now, which is researching for myself, talking to different people, out in the highways and byways, getting collective information from various people, coming home, trying all of that information on my own Phalaenopsis orchid. Yeah. White mold on orchids or snow mold, it thrives on decaying potting media. Because water speeds up the decaying process, the presence of snow mold on your orchids is often a sign that you're overwatering your plant. You can control snow mold by repotting your orchid in fresh media and watering only when the soil begins to dry. Now, that information was provided to you by a website that if you type in white mold on orchid in Google search, that is what's going to pop up, darling. That's what's going to pop up, darling. I'm not telling you no lies. I'm not telling, I'm not, honey, come on now. So, let's keep it moving. A lot of my foul pals have been trying water culture because the seasons have been so dry. So, we have been doing water culture and we, you know, you do um, semi and you got your full water culture. I'm not getting into all of that. But what have you is we leave it in for two days or more and we come back and our roots are brown. They're brown. They're soggy. We have white mold on top of it. Now, with white mold, let me say this. It's not to be mistaken with um, mealybugs, which can be white. Um, it's also not to be um, misconstrued with overfertilization, which is going to be a salt buildup in your potting media. Now, all of this will be able to, you will be able to differentiate in time, foul pals, if you are a new grower like me. Okay, foul pals, so let's take um, Vandal Charles out and let's give him a look see to see what's going on oh shit oh shit oh i'm sorry yeah i'm so i'm so sorry one of his leaves fell off honey and honey honey yeah, pal. so as you can see these roots are brown as you can see you got mold um all over it foul pals not just in you see down there and right here um, it's not just on top where we saw it. Now, the thing about the white mold is that it spreads and it spreads really quickly. Um, as you can see, this root is completely brown. It's completely covered with the, um, the mold and um, is actually the part that sits up here that's connected all the way down here. Now, what have you is, is actually in the process of spreading. Now, with mold, um, anytime that the environment is very cold, that is when the uh, mold, the white snow mold, it, it acts as pores, uh, spores. 
and it releases those spores and they're carried by the wind and then what have you is you have it on another plant. So in actuality, this might be the cause which um, I overwatered this phalaenopsis and then it just blew and spread it over to the Vanda. But that's not the cause. I've been paying a lot of attention to my orchids to try to make sure what I'm doing wrong, especially when it pertains to some of my favorite orchids, such as my Vanda Charles. He is a memory plant. So I want to do the, my very best to take care of him. As you guys know, this is my orchid from um, myorchidstore.com, R and R Orchids. I will leave that information in the description box below and also an info card in, in the, at the top, Val Pals. But his roots was beautiful, um, well taken care of. I had to bring him inside and start water culture on him because it was too cold for him to live outside once winter came. So I'm not the best at water culture. Like I said, I'm new at all of this, just like you, Fal Pals. So what I'm actually going to do, look how bad that is. This is why you want to catch it as soon as you can see it, Fal Pals, because it takes no time to spray it, and it's an indication of overwatering. Now, with water culture, what how I'm having success now is not based upon what I've seen on other people's channel. It's based upon my own experience. And um, I'm not able to leave Charles sitting in water um, for two days, especially chlorine water. Now, with the distilled water, I am able to leave him about three days. But um, what's working best for me is leaving him in water um three hours a day and then letting him dry out for the remaining part of that day. That's what, that is what's working best for me right now. Now with my um, Phalaenopsis, um, this baby, I repotted her and she is um, potted up in moss. And how I know that this is white moss because you're going to have Miss Orchid Girl coming on my channel again trying to correct me. This is white mold because, honey, once I take her out of the pot, I guarantee you there are going to be dead roots. It shouldn't be any dead roots in here, but because I have overwatered this phalaenopsis, trying to water her along with my phalaenopsis that's in other types of media, such as bark and the special blend from repotme.com. In actuality, I probably only needed to water her 10 to, every 10 to 14 days instead of watering her like the rest of my orchids, which I've been doing twice a week because the low humidity. So once I take her out of this pot, the roots are going to be dead because that mold is going to be water retentive on the roots. So All right, pal, pal. So uh, another indication that it is not um, a mealybug infestation that the um, orchid itself actually does have white mold is going to be this right here. This soft and smushy part of the leaf. Now, I always say in most of my videos, the way that an orchid or a plant is going to pull back the nutrients from a leaf is going to be from the tip to the bottom. Now, anytime that you see this right here, ooey and gooey and mushy and gushy, this could be cold damage or it could be from having mold. Now, mold, it starts on the roots and it, wait, work, it works its way all the way up to it eventually kills the plant. So, that's not what I want. So, it's going to be a lot of trimming that's going to be done here today. I'm going to spray the roots down with some hydrogen peroxide. A lot of fizzing going on. So, that's not a good sign right there, Fab Pals, all that fizzing. Can you see it? That's not good. But we are going to save Vanda Charles by all any means necessary. Now, these are sterilized shears that I'm going to use to cut a lot of roots off. Because the main issue that I had with Charles is doing water culture is that his roots would not all fit into the pot. Now, Fal Pals, look at the root that I cut off so that you would see. I'm going to try to salvage um, whatever roots that I can, but let's just give Charles a whole new start, baby. This is no good. This is no good, okay? 
this is no good. We just gonna start all the way over. That's what we are going to do. So stay tuned, Fab Pal. Stay tuned because what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, soak him a little bit more. This long green root is probably the only root that I'm going to leave on here. Now you will see Charles again coming soon for update number six, darling. Yes, honey. So, let me show you one more thing. Stay now, tuned. Now, pal, pals, as I said, once I take her out, I'm expecting to see some dead roots because anytime that you have white mold, it's going to prohibit the roots on the Phalaenopsis orchid from breathing, which results in suffocating the plant. I swear, I did not know I put all of this moss in here. I swear, I do not remember putting all of this moss in here. And um, I was I knew something was fishy because, like I said, the moss is always soaking wet. Um, this is a big Phalaenopsis orchid, so um, it shouldn't be soaking wet all of the time. It should be drinking this water up. Oh, you know I'm scary, honey. You know I'm scary. <laughs> okay, so. Um, it's a really, um, not so good smell to the media. That's another indication. I did save her in time so she'll have some roots left. Now, the old me would have waited all the way until the, uh, roots were completely destroyed because now I have a little bit experience with some of the phalaenopsis that I've already lost. As you can see, that mold is growing and it's killing off these roots. So I'm going to cut these roots off. Spray her with hydrogen peroxide. I'm going to leave both orchids out of the media for um, overnight to completely dry out. That's how you really kill the uh, mold by not allowing it to have any moisture. Oh, man. So, I'm not going to do a repotting video with you guys. I just wanted you to know... Um, the difference between white mold, black mold, millibugs, and all of that stuff. But until next time!